Good morning, students. Today we are going to be working on a Venn diagram that compares and contrasts our butterflies and moths. We learned about those yesterday. We are continuing to focus on our standard about the life cycles of a butterfly. You can read all of this. I've gone over it a few times. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me. You know I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. So we're going to work on our Venn diagram and then do a little read aloud of The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle. That's a fun story. And I think it relates to our caterpillars becoming butterflies. We are going to read this short <clears throat> little article about butterflies versus moths. And then we're going to draw a Venn diagram so we can compare and contrast butterflies and moths. Okay, I'm going to read this. Here we have a picture of a moth and here's a butterfly. Butterflies and moths are a lot alike, but they also have many differences. Both butterflies and moths are insects that fly and go through metamorphosis. Butterflies are more colorful than moths. Moths are brown or tan in color. <clears throat> moths usually fly around at night, while butterflies like to fly around during the day. When butterflies rest, they hold their wings above their backs, and moths fold their wings flat over their backs. Moths have feathered antennae that are short. Butterflies have long, straight antennae. Butterflies cannot hear. They do not have ears. Moths do have ears. Although moths do not have a proboscis, they survive off fat stored in their bodies. Butterflies drink nectar with their proboscis. Our turn and talk says, can you think of another difference or similarity between a butterfly and a moth? Hmm, think about that. <clears throat> Let's see. I'm going to draw my Venn diagram. It's just two big circles. This is what a Venn diagram looks like. <clears throat> then I have to label it. So on this side, butterflies. This side, moth. And in the middle is both. So then I look back to my story. <clears throat> Their differences go here and their similarities go in the middle. So let's see. Let me reread. Both butterflies and moths are insects that fly and go through metamorphosis. So that's one that I can write for both. So they are insects. They go through Met a more sis. <clears throat> so both the butterfly and the moth are insects and they go through metamorphosis. Let's see how they are different. Butterflies are more colorful than moths. So butterflies are more colorful. And moths are brown or tan in color. Moths usually fly around at night, while butterflies like to fly around during the day. So night, day, When butterflies rest, they hold their wings above their backs. So they hold their wings above their backs. And moths fold their wings. Fold their wings over their backs.
moths have feathered antennae that are short. Short. Feathered. How do you spell antenna? It's a strange word. <coughs> oh, antenna. I? Antennae? No, oh, sure. Butterflies have long, straight antennae. Antennae. Long, straight. Okay. And there are a few more, but I think this covers our main points. If you want to f figure out what the rest are, you can do that and send it to me. I'd love to see your finished Venn diagrams. Again, this is called a Venn diagram. It helps you compare, which is the same, and contrast. Contrast our differences. The very hungry caterpillar. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop, out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food. still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pairs, but he was still hungry. Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry.
Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle. One slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop. One piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake and one slice of watermelon. That night he had a stomach ache. day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf and after that he felt much better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore and he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big fat caterpillar. He built a small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon pushed his way out and he was a beautiful butterfly. Okay, to wrap up what we learned today, we talked about the difference between moths and butterflies. We saw they had a lot of similarities, but a few things made them different from each other. And we listened to author Eric Carle read his book called The Very Hungry Caterpillar. We know that caterpillar grows, it turns into a pupa or a chrysalis, and then out it emerges a beautiful butterfly. So that's our connection with reading to science and our life cycle.